so um, this video is going to look at energetics or part of the energetics topic from the uh, unit 2 of the AQA AS specification. The reason I'm not going to do it all as one is um, the energetics topic is quite it's reasonably detailed particularly the Hess's law stuff and so I'm going to split it into um, three sections the first one being enthalpy um, and bond energies the second being calorimetry uh, which is quite a short one, but then the third being Hess's law and the application of that to um, to calculate enthalpy changes using, particularly using thermochemical cycles, is the, is the way that I tend to do that. Um, so I'm going to look at today then, um, really kind of concentrating this first portion on this term enthalpy. So the term enthalpy, and it's a term that you within this energetics topic uh, comes up time and time again. And something that now is being brought into the GCSE as well. So this term enthalpy, now what does it mean? Now you're expected to have a definition of the term enthalpy at AS. Uh, and that has been asked before, state the term, particularly the term enthalpy change, I should say, rather than just what does the term enthalpy mean. So enthalpy change, it is, it's classed as this, it's the heat um, or energy. So heat or energy change. under constant pressure. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of better definitions of this, um, more advanced definitions and all the rest, but this is really what AQA want, and that's what um, that's what I'm ultimately going for here. So AQA, this is it they want this. If you can regurgitate this, you just grab yourself a mark in the exam and that's quite a good thing really. So enthalpy change, the heat or energy change under constant pressure. You might also see the term standard applied to this. So a standard enthalpy change of some sort. Now the term standard is, is another important one to, to be able to describe and really it's quite it's actually really quite easy and wherever you see the term standard in AS or A2 it really has the same meaning. Uh, the first thing is that we talk about a standard temperature and, and we talk about a standard pressure. So the temperature involved here, this standard temperature, is measured in Kelvin and it's 298 Kelvin, which in sort of layman's terms is 25 degrees Celsius. But they like to use this term Kelvin. Uh, and the pressure that they use, which is their standard pressure, is 100 kilopascals. Or the other way there was 100,000 pascals if you struggle a bit with units. Uh, but this is the bit you need. You need to learn them as this. <laughs> the only put reason for giving you the uh, the other ways of looking at it is just to help you really um, understand what it is. Learn them as this. So we've got enthalpy change, standard enthalpy change, and we've got these various definitions here. Now you'll have come across enthalpy changes, whether or not you realise it, um, within the terms exothermic and endothermic. Um, so that's where we're going to go now. Term exothermic then. So exothermic. Uh, and we've got the term endothermic. Now there's a variety of ways of, of remembering what these are. And obviously at GCSE, you could say exothermic heat given out. And you might have then refer to endothermic because the opposite heat taken in um, and both of those they're, they're both absolutely fine in my opinion they, they both describe uh, the, the energy change in particular and, and ultimately the enthalpy change that's occurring and we can apply rather than just use the term heat given out however we can use this enthalpy change and we can give it this symbol delta H and we find that delta H in this case here for an exothermic reaction, it is negative, and for an exothermic re reaction, we find that the enthalpy change is positive. So, if you were to be given a reaction, so A plus B going to C plus D has an enthalpy change that is minus 122 kilojoules per mole, you would know that this, therefore, is an exothermic reaction. And that actually brings one to the next point. The unit of enthalpy, 
the unit of the enthalpy change. Kilojoules per mole. So kilojoules per mole. Quite important you remember that. It's the standard unit of enthalpy change that you've really got to learn. And obviously in any question where you're trying to calculate an enthalpy change, you've got to include your units, as you do with all questions, but do make sure they're there. The thing to look at now, um, and where this goes, is to look at this term, is the negative and the positive enthalpy change, and really thinking, well, why is that the case? And the best way to look at that is uh, on energy level diagrams, which are brilliant things. So we have a couple of axes on each diagram. And if you understand this, then you can, by all means, you can skip ahead to the bond association, which again is a recap of GCSE. Uh, but this, some of this will be new to some people. Some of, some of it will be um, fairly sort of old hat. Now, the first one we're going to look at is exothermic. Now, in an exothermic reaction, we saw here, or rather I told you, that the enthalpy change is negative. Heat is given out. And this is what people find very confusing. Heat is given out. Heat is lost in the reaction. So that means reactants must be at a higher energy level than the products. So reactants and products and the reaction occurs in that manner there. So our reactants are at a higher energy level than our products and therefore we can see that the energy given out is this here and so that is our enthalpy change which of course is going to be negative. Switching it round with an just to make this a bit more clear so you know which one's which exothermic and endothermic with an endothermic reaction we have the absolute opposite we have a positive enthalpy change heat is taken in so that means the energy must increase so our products start down here sorry our reactants start down here terrible our reactants start down here our products must end up up here and so we have the complete opposite heat is taken in in order to get us to our product level but the similar kind of idea let's put some dotted lines across here Enthalpy change is still the difference between those two lines there. So this is our reactants this time. This is our products here. In both these cases, I'm missing something. And that magic something is the activation energy. And that's what this hump here is. And in this case, actually, it's this not particularly well-drawn diagram, but right to the top of that curve. It's this hump in both cases. So EA, so energy of activation, activation energy. This is the energy required for the reaction to take place. Now, if we think of reactions such as think of the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen, which actually we'll come on to and look at in a second with the bond association. The reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. Now we know that's exothermic. It's it's a it's an explosive, certainly hydrogen explodes um in, in oxygen, but only if we provide some heat. We need to give it a little bit of a kickstart, a spark, a flame, something like that to allow it to start. And that's where this en this activation energy comes in. It's that spark, that something to ignite it. Light in petrol. We've spilled some petrol on the floor. We want to set it on fire. We have to actually ignite it. If the activation energy was very, very low, then you would pour petrol and it would instantly react with oxygen um, because it would be allowed to do so. And that's a, a fairly simplistic term way to think of that but it kind of works for this level the other um, on the other hand here we have an endothermic reaction a good example being something like a, a thermal decomposition so calcium carbonate thermal decom thermally decomposing to calcium oxide and cal um, carbon dioxide with this we've got to heat our carbonate our calcium carbonate quite strongly in order for it to uh, break down into these two things so we can see that Calcium carbonate would be our reactant down here. Heat it, 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 good. And we're there at products and we're at calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So our activation energy is this whole thing there this time. And there's our delta H, which of course I should correct this here and, and make sure that keep it the same as this side, and that's obviously a positive change. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look at this now and say, well, this is a reaction. Um, and we're going to look at actually sort of why this is exothermic. So yes, it's explosive and all the rest, but why is that the case? Uh, and we can look at that using bond dissociation enthalpies, or bond dissociation energies. And it looks something like this. So I've got a reaction, and my reaction is between hydrogen and oxygen. And we know it's a, an exothermic reaction, but for the sake of argument, let's just say we don't know 
what the entropy changes, and that's actually true. We don't know the exact value, uh, but we can roughly work that out using, as I said previously, these bond association energies. Uh, and the way this works, or the way I like to think of this, is to take it sort of to the very start point is you need to know what these molecules look like. So what they're actually in reality, rather than just writing them out. So what I mean by that is hydrogen, I would write something like that. And obviously we've got two of those. We've got two times this hydrogen bound to another hydrogen. We've got an oxygen, a little double bond there. Go into two molecules of water, each one of those being this. Now each time I have a line, this line equals a covalent bond. So we can see here, covalent bond, covalent bond, double covalent bond, covalent bond. These being single, this being a big old double bond. Now what I like to do, and I find this, and this is how I tend to teach this, because I find this is the best way to do this, and you can do whatever way you want, but I, this is how I like to do this. Imagine that you're splitting all of the reactants down into atoms. So imagine you're taking them as molecules and you're just breaking them down to atoms. So what I've got here is if I break this bond here, and I break this bond here, I find that I end up with one hydrogen and then another hydrogen. Remember that I've got two lots, so I've done that to another molecule as well. So another two. And then I've done that to the oxygen, and so I end up with some oxygen here. Now in terms of balancing equations, if you struggle with the idea of balancing equations, you can now see that actually... This side I had those four hydrogens and the two oxygens here. Well this side I have the same. Two hydrogens and oxygen twice. Four in total and two there. So what you can imagine is you can say, well actually, this here, these atoms can be remade into the water. So we can take our hydrogen, we break the bonds, turn it into hydrogen atoms, we take our oxygen bond, we break it, turn it into an oxygen into two oxygen atoms and then we can reform these now as two water molecules and that to me makes a lot of sense we go from here and we go up to here and so all we need to do is we need to know the energy change for that and the energy change for that and then all we can do actually is we can just add those numbers together and that becomes quite straightforward what we need though for that is we need a table that actually allows us to see the um, various values that we're dealing with and that table looks a bit like this. Okay, so here I have a table. Apologies, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but this table gives me average bond association energies, blah, 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 blah. The reason it's given this term average is that it's averaged out over a lot of compounds. It's not just from one individual example. It's averaged from a lot of compounds. Um, but I can still use it completely fine in, in these examples here. So, here I've broken two hydrogen hydrogen bonds so each molecule has had one bond broken but I've done it to two molecules so if I look on here I can find my value and there it is there's my value for the hydrogen hydrogen single bond 436 kilojoules per mole therefore I know here I'm gonna have two times 436 kilojoules per mole brilliant well I've got one more bond as well an auction auction double bond here is this one right here 498 kilojoules per mole. Only one molecule, so don't have to worry about any sort of funny multiplying or anything like that. Over this side now, let's flip it around, let's change the colour. We're looking for an oxygen hydrogen bond, so there we go. 460. Now, what people find quite difficult sometimes with this is we are making one and then two. And then again, just because this oxygen is involved twice doesn't matter. It's the bonds we're looking at, not the number of hydrogens or the number of oxygens. Okay, It's the bonds. So I'm breaking one there, or rather in this case making one there, uh, and then making one there, but twice. So one, two, three, four hydrogen-oxygen bonds. So four times four, sixty. Now... You can leave this as this, and you could add this up, and you could minus it from this, and that's one way of doing this. Add these together, minus this number here, and that would work. The other option, and the other one which I think is a better option, is thinking, well, bond breaking, 
so the the art of bond breaking so breaking bonds requires energy so breaking bonds requires energy. And I've had to break these bonds and it's required energy to do so whereas on the other side making bonds as I've done here releases energy now what we can do is if we think back to this idea of requiring energy and releasing energy well that's very similar to the exothermic and endothermic aspect that we talked about earlier on so actually this process here of requiring energy we could say it has a positive energy change whereas this process of making the bonds being a, a really an exothermic process that therefore has a negative change so what I can do is I can say well 4 times minus 460 and so which I haven't actually mentioned which I should have done I apologize this table here all the values given here are values to break these bonds it's the energy to dissociate them it's the average bond dissociation bond breaking energies so these are all positive values because they're all energies required to break by sticking a negative sign on here that would be the energy required to make that bond and that's why I took that OH and again I apologize not saying this sooner took the OH and I can now um, whack a minus there because it's the exact same value to make that bond as it is to break that bond but you stick a negative sign when you're making it as opposed to positive sign when you're breaking it so what that means that leads us to this with these values here we can say well 2 times 436 add 498 bracket this up add minus 4 times 460 or well, actually I did that a bit better than that, that was a bit sloppy add 4 times minus 460 equals minus 470 stick our units on kilojoules per mole and this here this is the enthalpy change for the reaction that's just taken place so breaking bonds added to the negative making bonds gives us our over number and we would expect that it's a negative number it's an exothermic reaction to show you the other method that I mentioned I said um, 2 times 436 add 498 and you could just ignore that and just say well minus 1 from the other and that works equally as well but it doesn't actually it doesn't rely on your understanding of this being a negative process uh, and this being the positive process which is fine it, you will still get the marks for that it's not going to be a problem but I, I prefer this because it's just it's a bit more correct what I now finally want to sort of end on with, really with that is this tells us now this actually sort of leads to us well why is a reaction exothermic or endothermic well a reaction is exothermic when the energy released from the bonds being made is actually greater than the energy which is taken in from the bonds being broken. So this side is greater than this side. To flip it round, an endothermic reaction is one where this side, the bond breaking side, the reaction takes more energy to break the bonds than it does to than, than energy is released when the bonds are made. That doesn't mean more bonds are broken or made. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the general in terms of energy, more is required for this half than is released in this half in an endothermic reaction and that's a very very important thing to realize and that explains really the idea of sort of the endothermic and exothermic right from the top there right through showing us here and finally with a calculation uh, and that's that really that is a, a fairly brief introduction into what enthalpy is um, and and how you would calculate an enthalpy change using bond association enthalpies or energies um, as is required in the energetic section of Unit 2 of the AQA AS chemistry specification.